Welcome everybody. Thanks for being here on behalf of the Commission. Uh, joining us today we have uh, Ms. Hunt and Mr. Smith. Thank you for coming today. Good afternoon, everyone. Henrik Sargerbegin here um, for today's meeting. Meetings are broadcast live on Glendale TV, viewable on Spectrum Cable, Channel 6, and AT&T UVerse, Channel 99. Meetings are also streamed live in high definition on the city's webpage, glendaleca.gov forward slash live, on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash myglendale, and on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire devices using a free app called ScreenWeave and choosing Glendale TV from the menu. Meetings are also archived on the city's website for viewing anytime at glendaleca.gov forward slash agendas. Please call 818-548-4013 for program schedules. DVDs of the proceedings are also available for purchase in the city's uh, clerk's office. For public comments and questions during the meeting, please call 818-937-8100. Public comments on a specific agenda item will be taken when that agenda item is discussed. If you have any questions about matters on the agenda or requests for assistance, please contact the Community Services and Park Administration Office at 818-548-2000 during regular business hours. Okay, I'll proceed with the roll call. Commissioners, Alcazar is absent. Kalfayan? Here. Meek? Here. Wolfson is absent and President Senator Begin. Here. The agenda for the October 17, 2022 regular meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on or before October 14, 2022. Item two, upcoming council agenda items. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, President Sardar Begin and members of the commission. We have one item coming up this month, which is actually tomorrow night, October 18th. Award of American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, ARPA funding through Los Angeles County Emergency Food and Shelter Program for the city's elderly nutritional meals program administered by United Way of Greater Los Angeles. Um, we will be submitting a motion of accepting 85,000 in ARPA funding for fiscal year 2022-2023 through LA County Emergency Food and Shelter Program and a resolution of appropriating 85,000 in ARPA funding for the Elderly Nutritional Meals Program. That's it for uh, the, the next month. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is item three, commission staff comments. I have no comments at this time. No comments. Okay. Uh, item four, oral communications. We don't have any cards or callers. Item five, consent items. At A is approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on August 15, 2022. I will move that. <clears throat> I was absent for one of those two meetings. Can we separate them? Uh, yes. Uh, we're Right now we're looking at August and you were present at that one. Thank you. So, I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, commissioners Alcazar is absent. Kafayan? Yes. Meek? Yes. Wilson is absent and President Sarapagian. Yes. Okay. And 5B is approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on September 19, 2022. And we do not have a quorum present that we're present at that meeting. So we're going to move it to the next meeting. Item 6, reports information only, 6A, capital improvement program CIP update. Good afternoon, uh, President Sardarbeg and members of uh, Commission. Uh, as, as in every year in October, we present an update on our capital improvement projects. And today, uh, no difference, we will be following through our uh, normal schedule with CIP programs. First, we covered the items that were completed within the last year. Since last October until just this past September, two projects were completed. One of them was the Duke Major Wilderness Park, the Stone Barn Nature Education Center and Restroom, the rehabilitation and the restroom construction, as well as the parking lot resurfacing at Shoal Ball Fields. For the Duke Major Nature Education Center, the scope included constructing a new restroom building and uh, to support the barn operations. And we did complete the interpretive exhibit for the education center. It did have the wheelchair lift down to the lower level, stairway to the lower level. The project budget was three million in CIP and development impact fee funds, and both projects were completed. Restroom was in October of 2021, and the education center was completed in March. And uh, we did have the grand opening also that same month. 
uh, later uh, within the month in March for the grand opening. And I believe commissioners were present at the, the opening. Uh, here's a picture for the uh, for our residents to be able to see. One is a picture on the left is a picture of the new restroom structure, and then the one on the right is a picture of the interior of our education center. Second project we completed was the Shoal Ball Field parking lot resurfacing. This was not the entire parking lot. This was only the segment of the parking spots that are closer to the ball field. What had happened over the years is uh, the asphalt had broken apart and the tree roots had lifted it. So we had tripping hazards and dangerous uh, situations for, for people who parked there. So the job was to cut it all down, cut back the roots, work with forestry to identify what how much of the roots we can cut, which trees would have to be replaced, and uh, have it completed. And as of today, about 99% of the project is completed. Only thing left is the striping of the parking spots. And you'll see in the next picture, um, this is what it used to look like before, before the job was done, and here it is completed. The, see the white lines aren't actual, the striping, those are just marks that were made by the contractor. They will come back next month to finish the striping. But this was the project, only this portion of the parking lot. Down the road, we will evaluate the rest of the parking lot and then figure out a way to uh, incorporate that along with other uh, improvements that we want to do with the facility. We have two of our playgrounds currently in construction phase, Palanconi and Playground. And both of these playgrounds, this commission had approved their designs. Uh, they're basically replacing the existing aging play equipment. They're both gonna have two to five year olds and five to 12 year olds. Uh, there will be also some ADA code compliance uh, improvements at both facilities. But playgrounds will be mostly shaded. Shade canopies have been part of our program going forth. And at Glen Oaks, we're also removing the existing sand volleyball court. That's where the new track slides, competitive track slides are gonna go for the kids, again, with shade covering it. The Palanconi project, currently in construction, anticipated to be completed end of this month, actually. Uh, the project for that, the budget is 494,000 in CDBG funds and about $50,000 in CIP funds. For Glen Oaks, we are using Measure A funds at 474,000 and approximately 166,000 in CIP funds. And that project will likely start next Monday, October 24th, although the original schedule was later, we're able to squeeze it in and the, uh, the playground area will be fenced off and taken down next week on Monday and signs are posted so the community is fully aware. We anticipate Glen Oaks project to be completed mid-December, could be sooner if the project progresses at the rate the contractor has been working. Here is the layout of what Palanconi's new design is uh, intended to be. And then this would be the Glen Oaks uh, Park Playground. So we have a couple of projects that are permit ready and will be uh, progressing to the next phase, sports complex artificial turf project and then the Fremont Park renovation project. For the sports complex, this, uh, the, the hold on this was the fact that we went through the, the LCA study with the commissions and then with council. Upon council direction to move forward with artificial turf at the sports complex, we are now ready to move to the next phase. This was permit ready at uh, about 99% to 100%. We will uh, revisit the, the, the layout, the design, and make sure all, everything is uh, dotted, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And then during the budget fiscal, budget cycle, you know, sometime between January and March when we start submitting our requests, we will be considering this project to be submitted for next year's project funding. Right now, we are allocated $250,000, and that is mostly to uh, do the design and construction documents. This will be replacing the baseball field with multi-purpose artificial turf, where we're gonna have the baseball layout as well as a U-12 soccer field on the outside uh, outfield. And this was the design that we had gotten from uh, SWA. The work at this facility is going to be only uh, the inside of the fence line, so no improvements are necessary outside of the fence line of the field, only interior of the field. And with the Fremont Park project, council is uh, commission, apologies, are fully aware of the, uh, the master plan process, all the new amenities, but for our residents who are new to this project, uh, we will be constructing a new community building, which, going to, uh, which is gonna encompass the tennis clubhouse, meeting rooms, rentable space, kitchenette, a new restroom and office space for our staff that are gonna manage the programming. It will construct a new artificial turf soccer field, a U12 size, a splash pad, which doesn't exist now. We have currently uh, the waiting pool and the new design based on the community's request. We're going to a splash pad, which will be one that recycles the water. It's going to meet all the current standards and guidelines set by the county health. 
for recycling and cleaning the water, treating it so we're not wasting as much water. It'll have new picnic pavilions, tables and benches. Uh, it'll have new drinking fountains and you know barbecues, additional 26 parking spaces, giving us a total of 61. Uh, two basketball courts that's gonna be dual use with pickleball. We're gonna have walking pass with, uh, walking pass with fitness equipment. For the tennis courts, we relocated to make room for Han Drive to continue. We'll show you uh, the layout next. Um, currently, the Han Drive kind of intersects at the tennis courts with a small parking area. We'll be shifting those tennis courts to open that up so we'll have a full roundabout around the whole perimeter of the park. We're gonna replace the children's playground. As we've said in the past, we're gonna move it, shift it more inside of the park, not as close to the street, so it'll be a lot safer for the kids to play. We're gonna have a security drive through the park based on our meetings with police. They wanted that to be able to keep an eye on the inside of the park, enhanced lighting, and of course, new drop tolerant landscaping. The project estimated cost is about 6.5 to $17 million. We currently have about 13.3 million in CIP, CDBG, Measure S, and Development Impact Fee funds. Uh, as far as status, between last meeting and this one, we have gotten Maestro Development, construction management firm on board. They've been reviewing the plans. And um, as a matter of fact, this past week, October 10th, notice inviting bids were sent out. We anticipate bids to come back probably January. And anticipated construction timeline right now is for June 2023. And uh, it's about an 18 month construction is the estimate at the moment. We're looking at completing construction at December 2024. And this is the, the, the master plan layout. I'm not sure this laser pointer is gonna show on there. It does not. Uh, in the north of the tennis courts where you will see the open driveway, that is where Han Drive is gonna continue and meet the parking lot, which was in the backside of the existing uh, tennis courts. The two tennis courts on the right side, the far right, will be regular tennis courts. Thank you, Iris. May I? Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Oh, maybe it, you might have to do it, sorry. <laughs> Great idea, thank you though. The two on the far right tennis courts, those are at regular level. The two adjacent to them towards the center, those are sunken tennis courts for competitive tennis play. Mm. So what this will allow the concessioner and or groups to design tournaments and the finals of tournaments can be played in the, the kind of indented lower tennis courts with seating on the side for for, you know, because it's competitive, we wanna be able to have people to watch. And coincidentally, the building right next to it is the new community center that's gonna have a patio facing the tennis court so you could have a little, you know, gathering there and uh, enjoy the, the picnic area while you are watching competitive tennis. Just south of that is where the playground and the water play feature is gonna go. Water play feature where Iris is circling and in the, just south of that, uh, Iris is where the new playground is gonna go. And uh, as you can tell, the soccer field is on the, the easternmost side of the park. Thank you, Iris. We have a number of projects in planning phase at different stages of the planning and design phase. Uh, we'll go through them individually. First is Dunmo Park, the parking lot resurfacing. We've been working on this project with Public Works Engineering. Uh, we have the design completed. Uh, part of the improvements here is going to improve pedestrian safety. It's gonna install some gates and it's gonna install some safety fencing. The entrance and exit areas based on our conversation with the, the Dunsmore Elementary principal and uh, teachers that happen to be at the side where we're walking, they wanted to have some improvements for the children's safety as they cross. All those improvements will be part of the project. It is $1.1 million budgeted in CIP funds. The notice inviting bids for this project is gonna go out next week, uh, the 25th, which is next Tuesday, I believe. Right now, we are looking at project to start in March 2023 with the tentative completion date of July 2023. So this is moving in, in the direction we anticipate uh, as far as the schedule goes. This is what it currently looks like. As you can see, it's in fairly bad shape. Uh, and does more part, given the slopes, a lot more water runs off, so making it you know, more hazardous for the public. Uh, timing of this project is uh, critical for us to complete. Here is the design. This is somewhat difficult to make out, so I'm gonna switch from this design to the, uh, the aerial design. This is the aerial shot of the tennis court um, in the middle. Just north of the tennis court, that little turf area is where we're gonna put, just, just north of the tennis courts. Yeah, right there, thank you, Iris. We're gonna put a pedestrian path through that, and then at the end of it, the west end, we're gonna have a pedestrian path going across to, um, just across, up, 
right there where the concrete is, we're gonna put fencing over there. So this way we will separate the children walking from, um, from the parking lot in a safe pedestrian path over with a little gate to access the building and then the parking lot throughout that parking area, there's gonna be fencing to keep the kids away from the street. This was at the request of the, the district, uh, the, the principal, uh, as well as staff just making their observations. So we're gonna have fencing where the arrow is pointing right now, as well as, Seb, if you wanna go to the east side, those two areas, based on SEVOGS, as a matter of fact, Mr. Garabidian's recommendation, we feel as though there's a need to put some sort of gating over there, fencing, so kids and the balls, if they're playing ball, doesn't run off onto the street. At least it'll prevent the, um, the path of travel for, from pedestrians and the vehicles. Thank you, Seva. So Pacific Park Artificial Turf. Now this project name is gonna throw us off, but I wanted to talk about what the original scope was, and then I wanna talk about the revised scope. As, uh, as the commission is fully aware, during the council meeting, this was one of the projects that city council felt should remain as natural turf. Uh, the original artificial turf project was going to replace the natural grass with artificial turf, make it multi-purpose soccer for U12 as well as baseball, and it was intended to increase available playing time by about three months, but it also included some new fencing, extending of the fences so the soccer balls don't fly over the, the fence onto the street, on the south side as well as the east side, some larger gate openings to allow for vehicles and large uh, equipment to come through on both ends, south end as well as the east end, of the, uh, the, ball fall, uh, the ball field, and we are gonna maintain those. So the only thing literally is gonna change in this project, instead of having artificial turf field, we're gonna maintain it as natural grass. But in order to do that, to, to build it correctly, we're gonna uh, hire the consultant that we had, we're looking at amending his uh, existing professional services agreement, the PSA, um, to incorporate the new scope, and the new scope is gonna include engineering it in a way that the, the grading captures the water and channels it appropriately to drains we're gonna install that can percolate onto the, the soil uh, to increase our you know, water base in the soil. Uh, as well as uh, install new irrigation, we're gonna realign the irrigation, obviously new site after it's all done. We're gonna maintain the new fencing, bullpens and gates as part of the project, and it's gonna improve the drainage and the grading to, so that when we water or when we have rains, currently most visitors and users know that if it's heavy rain, most everything starts washing off the field onto where the bleachers are. To prevent that, we're gonna redesign uh, the engineering of the field, the grading. Project budget for this particular one uh, currently is 2.1 million in city BG DIF and measure A funds. We are evaluating what the new estimate is going to be. Um, and once we have an estimate, we're gonna go through the proper uh, uh, channels to get the, the new funds allocated and uh, amendment done to the PSA so we can move to the next phase of this project. And I actually showing you the, the layout, the original layout of uh, this was the artificial turf layout, and just a point of note to everyone, although it says artificial turf, this isn't going to be artificial turf, this will be natural grass, it's just the layout for at least the baseball field will be the same. It will not be aligned by the soccer fields because this was originally gonna be inlaying into the, the artificial turf. We'll leave the turf areas open so that it can be painted uh, for soccer play whenever soccer is using it for their games. Another project that is uh, um, in the design phase, at the end of its design phase, is the shade structures for uh, the pool, the playground, as well as the new water play uh, feature and the new restroom. Actually, the renovation of the existing restroom. It will cover uh, shade on both two, two to five year old and the five to 12 year old playgrounds. In the pool deck area, we're gonna increase some shade based on uh, uh, requests from our users. There, there is a need for additional shade in the, uh, the pool deck area. We're gonna enhance the water play feature from what it is now to again, the new uh, system where the water will recycle itself, be treated and be reused and a more enhanced playability than the original design. As well as we're renovating the restroom at this uh, particular property to make room for uh, additional use as well as more traditional restroom instead of people being able to lock themselves in, which we had a lot of challenges of people locking themselves in overnight or basically monopolizing the restroom. So the design is being changed to mimic other restrooms and make it more operationally and more feasible for everybody's use. Current budget for this project is one point, oh, approximately 1.7 million in uh, a CDBG measure A and CIP funds. 
This one also is ready to be uh, going out to bid. So uh, next week, as a matter of fact, Tuesday, as is scheduled now, hopefully still the case, the project specifications will be scheduled for council adoption. And at the same time, council blesses the project to move to uh, be advertised for bids. Currently, we're estimating uh, project construction to start about April 2023 uh, through September 2023. Uh, this is a picture of the playground areas with the shade. As you can see, the shade is going to be kind of uh, uniquely designed, um, and it won't, may not cover every angle of the play area, but this, this the shade structure is going to provide shade to uh, almost in its entirety the play area on both the 2 to 5 and the 5 to 12. Uh, next picture, this is what um, the pool area is going to, pool deck area. What we have there is currently mimicking this existing design. So uh, the designer have taken the existing shade structures and kind of expanded it to the southern end of the pool. Pool corner is southwest end of the pool corner, mimicking the exact same layout of the design uh, that we have currently. And then this is what the restroom is intended to look like. As you can see, kind of the partitions will kind of provide the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Thank you, so, uh, the privacy. Partitions are designed for privacy, and then the restroom gates will remain open for anybody to be able to go in. Obviously, we have the ability to lock them at night, secure it, but then inside the restroom, they'll have their partitions inside to get their own privacy inside as well. Currently, it's just the door from the outside. You go in, you lock it, and that's basically, that's basically it. This allows for ability for more people to be able to use the restroom at the same time, and also, no one locks them in for safety reasons. And this will be on both sides on the restroom. One of it, one side is facing the, the playground, the other side is facing the baseball field. With the Central Park Master Plan, um, you may be driving by on Colorado, you see that the museum is making quite a bit progress on their project. We on our end are uh, ready to move forward to the next phase. We are uh, reviewing proposals that were received um, from consultants on the design development portion of the project. Public Works Engineering is reviewing the final submittals. Uh, Parks was part of it too. We have given uh, our feedback and uh, in the near future, once the evaluations are done, that uh, report will go to council to award the contract to the successful consultant to start the design development process. Uh, this is currently, we have $2.1 million to date in development impact fee funds. Uh, this was a project that we worked very closely with uh, our friends in community development department. They had the original process, the master planning process was designed by them with assistance with, from Parks and Public Works. It has now been handed over to Public, Public Works Engineering to follow through the next phase, which is design development. And we'll still be working in close contact with those two departments, uh, especially with CDD in providing some of the uh, original uh, concepts of the funding sources for this project. CDD will be very heavily involved in helping us with that. And of course, the project itself will reconstruct our Central Park with the museum taking the southern lawn portion area, the current uh, parking lots within, uh, just south of the library and south uh, east of the library, those parking lot, parking places will be gone. That's where our turf is gonna go. We're gonna have a new playground. They're gonna build some paseos, some central lawn area. It's gonna have a, a, a large open area for uh, diverse community events. It's gonna have water play feature. And uh, it will be a practically a new park that we won't recognize after we're done. Okay. Yes, uh, will there be a drop off for the library somewhere in this uh, new park where you know people with disabilities could be dropped off? The, the, there will be a drop off uh, right where the current drop off is at the central uh, at the ARC, the turnabout right about there. But most of the areas right now in front of the library, those parking spots will be converted into more uh, green space. So uh, the the driveway on Harvard will still have ability for people to be dropped off, but it's not a circle drive like currently where you have right in front of the library. Um, that will that will kind of be shifted over to where the ARC drive by drive through is down at the west side, east side of the library. And there'll be a path to get to the library. There will be a path to get to the library, yes. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, this, this picture doesn't do it much justice, um, but right next to where Central Park ARC is uh, uh, kind of identified in the picture, the drive path there will stay as it is currently, and then that's where people can be dropped off and there will be a path that leads them onto the library as well as to the ARC access. The next on the design projects, Verdugo Park North renovation. This project um, has been master planned for some time. It saw some revisions over the years and commission was part of 
uh, uh, one of the, at least the later revisions. The uh, existing playground, uh, the last time we, we, we went through this process, we were replacing the existing playground with more of a meditation maze. The existing restroom building is going to be demolished and a new restroom building with a small community room will be constructed. It's gonna have some accessible parking spaces adjacent to that on the little uh, uh, driveway in the park, the road in the park, just to allow for access to the community building based on new code requirements. And uh, we're also, the community garden is already completed. It was part of the project, the original project. We kept it in here because it was the scope. The community garden has been completed. We, we did that announced with our staff. And then right now we're finalizing the remaining plans for, for moving forward to the permitting phase of the project. And this project currently is $3 million in CIP and DIF funds. Uh, this is the layout of the, uh, the, the project improvements. On the far right is the new restroom building construction. Uh, the design, it is using the existing footprint of the restroom and the patio area to build a new, so we're not expanding it, so we won't impact any of the trees around there. It's gonna have a little ADA path to uh, access it from the roadway. And then you can see the parking lots right by the roadway. I'm not sure if you can point it to the little piece. No, the piece, I can, two, three, four, adjacent to the 27. We're still explaining them. Yeah, those are gonna be the new parking, ADA parking spots, thank you. And then the path of travel, the path of travel that leads to the building as well as opposite direction to the maze. And uh, we're looking forward to the final construction documents on this for final review and moving forward to the bidding cycle. Babe Herman, uh, this is a project that we scoped, uh, identified the scope of work. It will take the existing restroom building and rehabilitate it to meet ADA standards, uh, you know, improve the plumbing, electrical, lighting, and the building around the perimeter as well. We, we've budgeted $300,000 in Major A funds to this project. We will be working on the RFP. We started and we took a, put a pause. As soon as we get our new park planner, we'll be taking this project first up and moving it forward to the next phase to start finishing the, the RFP and then soliciting design consultants to come and do the proposal, uh, provide proposals to do the design of the project. And this is the existing uh, building. The path of travels, parking is gonna require some improvements to meet new ADA standards. Gloria Tennis Concession Building. Um, this project is currently in design phase construction documents. We're probably at about 50% construction documents. We have been allocated $725,000 from Measure S to complete this project. And essentially we're taking that existing building, this particular building, given its very narrow small size, we're gonna expand it, uh, make room for a little sitting area for parents as they're waiting for their kids to finish their uh, tennis play. We're gonna make sure the, uh, the restroom uh, that is attached to this building, a very small restroom will be ADA accessible. It'll make room for the uh, small office for the tennis pro waiting room, enhance it, enhance the building, as well as make some ADA improvements just around the perimeter of the building, like the steps and the walkway path coming in with some parking improvements as well. Next is our dog park. Um, commission was fully involved in the process of uh, identifying where the dog park's supposed to go for our residents. So we are looking at constructing Glendale's first dog park and the location selected as of now is parking lot 11 on Colorado Street. It is east of Brent and it's right across from ARC slash Central Park. The budget for this currently is 350,000 in DIF funds. Uh, we do have an RFP ready to be submitted for the design development work. We're still waiting on direction uh, to whether to include other sites in addition to this particular site as part of a feasibility study. One of the ideas that had come up in council and we've been get, got in direction to look at the community garden at Palmer Park, whether that would be ideal to figure out a way to blend half of it maybe as the community garden, the other half as a small dog park. Um, we're waiting on final direction to proceed, include that as part of our RFP to see if we uh, should include it in the, in the RFP for a feasibility study. As well as some other sites have been coming up in part of our discussions. Now, whether we move forward just to parking lot 11 right now and add those later on, or whether we wait a little longer to add those other sites to conduct the feasibility study is something we are waiting for. And once we have that final direction, we'll move forward to uh, uh, soliciting for proposals. Emerald Ave Playground Replacement. Uh, this is a project that last year we applied for a grant for from uh, Prop 68 per capita. We're awarded 178,000 approximately. Uh, it will replace the existing aging equipment. Um, to date, 
uh, with up-to-date code compliant play equipment. We're gonna improve the accessibility uh, around the play area. These, both these projects, both areas, the five to 12 to, uh, and two to five will have shade canopies as part of the uh, design. Uh, recently, uh, we also received uh, approval from CPRS slash Game Time. This was the grant we got for the Nibley and Car Park project, a Game Time uh, a grant where it paid for about 100% match on the playground equipment. So we're estimating that approximately between $90,000, $100,000 based on the final design of the equipment could be this grant award. And we have been awarded this as well. Uh, so uh, between the two funds, we have about 275,000. The balance of the project funds, once we have a final design, determine the actual cost of the project, we're looking at asking for the fund from like our Coinbee funds, Measure A funds, as well as CIP. So right now we're finalizing that design. Uh, coincidentally, about a month ago, I had an email from the neighbor association asking for shade for the player ground. And uh, in that conversation, uh, I communicated that this particular project is actually moving forward and it will incorporate shade. So uh, to, we're gonna share the design with the association, uh, with the president that had reached out and they'll share it, get feedback. We're gonna take their feedback, bring it to commission for commission's approval before we move on to council for final approval of the project. This will be a time sensitive project because it is a uh, CPRS game time grant. They have a very fast process for this construction completion because they like to award the awardees, I guess, at the annual conference, CPRS conference, which is held in April. So this project would have to move a very fast pace and we will proceed with your blessing. Once you give us your blessing, we'll proceed to council asking for us to go through a, a co-op process when we do the, 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 the construction design build A to Z, hiring uh, an individual that is part of a co-op, uh, meaning that they've gone through traditional bidding process and there's, they've been approved by a lot of agencies to be used as a, an official bid process contractor to be doing this work. And we have two projects in environmental phase, and both of these projects commission is fully aware of. One is the Cerritos Elementary, uh, the soccer field multipurpose artificial turf field with a budget of 3.4 million. This project at this point is at a pause to allow for further discussion with the district, because even with, with council's meeting, even council at the time did not direct to move forward or not move forward, wanted us to have further discussion with the school district to see how they felt about artificial turf field at the school, the elementary school. Uh, this would have been the layout that we had put together. It would have been a U12 uh, uh, field with a running, rubberized running track, of course lights, and a lot of the amenities that are existing in the school would have still kept on the site, just gonna move it to other parts of the campus. And the other one was Wilson Middle School, it was gonna be a little larger field, it's gonna have a uh, U14 artificial turf field, as well as a practice field, um, and a new restroom building onto the property as well. This project, because of the restroom building and the additional, the size of the uh, the renovation was gonna be at $5 million in development impact fee funds. Again, this also will be uh, on hold for further discussions with the district to see uh, where what their position is and then have likely direction received from their board as well as council as to what to do next on these projects. And this would have been the layout. The solar array that's listed, that's on the screen has already been done. GUSD had completed those solar panels, uh, uh, both of them. And the one in blue down in the south end of the, the picture, that's the restroom structure that would be constructed. And of course, the, the, the U14 field as well as the practice field adjacent to it. Those are all the projects currently on our plate for capital improvements. If you have any questions, I will attempt to answer them for you. The uh, meditation maze at the Verdugo Park, is that just a painted on asphalt or what is that? Can you? We're waiting for the final designs, but our recommendation is to go with something that's more natural based. So we're looking at not asphalt, maybe decomposed granite would be it, maybe some, you know, like crushed rock or whatnot in there with some landscaping around the perimeter and, you know, trees to kind of give it more of a sense of nature to allow that peaceful. Yeah, we do not want to do it asphalt or concrete. So that one I know for certain. Thank you, I was concerned about it. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's right in the middle of the park with the, the green lush surrounding uh, the turf and the landscape. We did not want to add to that with, with concrete. So it's gonna be more nature, natural materials. Only question I had for you is for um, field three um, at Glendale Sports Complex. Have you guys looked into possibly increasing the size or the, the height of the fencing? I know that there's been issues where, the, where 
uh, baseballs are flying into the parking lot. And field three, if I'm not mistaken, is the uh, corner one, right? On the corner yes, of the it's the one between the soccer fields and the baseball fields, a little parking lot. You're, you're absolutely correct. President Sardarbegian, I know Gabrielle stand up, stood up because I know she's had, she's had to deal with this for quite some time. And I will defer to her to answer uh, the questions related to the height of the fencing and netting. President Sardarbegian and members of the commission. Um, yes, we, we have already raised the height of that fence once as part of the um, field number one St. Francis improvement. Um, it is something that we are currently thinking about doing again, possibly folding it into a parking lot project up there that, that might be coming in down the line in a year or two. Um, it is a costly uh, improvement because it isn't just raising the level of the fencing, but we actually have to um, put the footings significantly deeper. So every foot we're raising in height, we have to take the footings down deeper. Um, so it is, um, it is something that is on our mind. It's uh, not currently planned for as part of this project, um, but we are looking at it as a possibility for future projects at the facility. Uh, when you're talking about raising the fence, are you talking about a chain link type of fence, or are you talking more like what they have at driving ranges, which is like netting. telephone poles with netting. Um, yes, commissioners, it is uh, more of a netting that would go. Right now we do have chain link fence that's approximately um, 12, feet 12 feet high. And then on top of that, we have another, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head, another 12 feet of um, netting. So any additional height on top of that would be all netting, like a golf range. Um, it's actually yeah. a netting that's more specific to baseball yeah. and baseball fields. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Of course. I mean, the, the question, President Sardarbegian, the question was a very good one because we've had that same challenge over at Pacific Park. The, f the, net, the fencing, although we raised at 20 feet, have we not? We, we raised the fencing in the north end of that park, uh, uh, soccer field, for uh, up to 20 feet, and we still have balls that fly over, and the neighbors are, you know, uh, expressing concern. And as part of our evaluation to increase that, we, we can't continue increasing with fencing, so we opted to look at the option of just netting. Can we go 20 feet of the fencing and then go netting? Uh, given the, the, the current existing infrastructure of the, the footing of the posts, we had engineer look at it, it cannot accommodate any more height. Even with the netting, wind is going to be an impact, so we don't want to cause any more damage. So that's going to require engineering, and we're working with uh, uh, the district on that one. Public Works, as a matter of fact, has that job on hand to start reviewing it, maybe getting some new engineering done for the footings. Uh, the idea we're approaching with is not to remove the existing fencing and post, but put another post outside of that, from outside of the facility, only for the netting that goes above the 20 foot mark. So we, cost-wise, it might be a little cheaper instead of replacing what's there. So, uh, you know, some different design outside of it, go up third 20 feet and then raise another 10 with netting. We're not there yet, but that's part of the discussion we're having as to how we can accommodate for that. So uh, again, as, as Gabrielle mentioned, the same challenge exists. We had engineer review the existing footing of the fencing, the one they looked at the original construction, it cannot accommodate us doing any increase to the fencing, whether it is uh, a chain link or, or netting. So hence, we cannot put a pause on it. And I know we're working with GWP on a project upcoming at the parking lot. Um, and if that project moves forward, there's be more solar panels. I mean, it's a, it's a great, we can share that as small panels were being considered uh, uh, solar panels. And with that project, we're looking at how can we uh, will, will the balls fly over and impact the existing panels, break it? So that conversation we're having with GWP and with the next couple of years, if that project moves forward, look for ways to help prevent that as much as possible. Okay. And then last question for you. In regards to Fremont Park and the soccer field that's being installed eventually, um, is there going to be seating, any kind of bleacher seating for the parents on, I believe, on the what east side, which would be Kenilworth? Um, so if we're looking at on the corner of more or less like Kenilworth, um, is there going to be any kind of seating over there? Because from what I remember, the uh, soccer field's fenced in, right? Correct. So President Sarbanes, the soccer field will be fenced in to allow control to some degree uh, and avoid, you know, uh, vandalism. It will be secured at nights after all the play is done. There are a couple of picnic tables laid out on the outside, but currently it doesn't have any benches designed to be on the, for sure not in, inside of the field, right. but mostly on the outside. And I think part of the design, we allow for some room for people to bring their own bleachers. And most of the time with soccer players, uh, when the families come up, they bring their little chairs, lawn chairs or whatnot to have for that. Uh, we can 
look at it, this has been quite some time, it's a good question, I have to reevaluate. I do know there's some picnic ta tables there, but I know there's no bleachers outside, and see if there is room to accommodate for some of that. We can always add more tables or bleachers in that area to allow for more people to watch uh, the games. And as a matter of fact, on both sides, um, I'll, I'll respond on that. Let me, let me dig into a little deeper. Next month, I will respond, because I think on the east side, there may be some seating dedicated on the east side of that, not on the west side. Or, or I'm even, sorry, on the west side, not on the east side, by the street. Or even possibly what you're doing with the tennis, uh, the, the two tennis courts, the west side, I guess, um, and what they have at Brand Park as far as just, you know, structured, it's not necessarily seating, but if, um, if the soccer field sunk a few feet where you have, you know, just kind of um, along the path on the uh, west side of the soccer field where parents could sit, that might be a consideration as well instead of, having dedicated like bleachers there. Yeah, you know, the President of the Bay again, we'll definitely look at that option and see what's the most feasible. Uh, I don't know we would consider like changing the grade at this point in time because it might require some severe re-engineering, but uh, keeping the grade as it is, but looking for ways to have some seating outside, the west side sounds a lot more reasonable because you know it's in the park, you're not sitting on the street. We'll look at that if there aren't any, consider how we can make that accommodation happen as we go through the process. Thank you. Staying with Fremont Park, uh, are there any plans at this moment for saving any of the mature trees that are there? Uh, C Commissioner uh, Meek, as a matter of fact, yeah, a m significant majority of the mature trees will be saved. Now, there will be some trees that will be removed. Uh, we, we've been very open about that. There's a lot of those palm trees that are there that will probably be removed. Um, it, there are new trees also being planted to be planted, larger size 24 inch box to 40 inch, inch, inch size box trees that can replace whatever we are removing. Um, but the mature trees, specifically trees, uh, the indigenous trees, none are being removed. There may be a handful of mature trees that will probably be removed, but that's what we're planning on replacing them with new trees to supplement what's being removed. So we're being very mindful of the canopy, the tree canopy we have at that park and maintain that canopy as best as possible. Yeah, I'd like to just save as whatever we can. I Absolutely. know that when you're moving tennis courts and doing this other stuff, you have to get rid of a lot of things. And the palm trees don't provide shade anyway. <laughs> but uh, I do, you know, it is an old park and it's nice to have some of those old trees saved. Yes, if Absolutely. You, you know, whoever the construction people are, mark those trees to save them. Yeah, no, uh, uh, without a doubt. The trees that will be removed is already identified uh, within the plan, so the con contractor will know which ones will remove. If you look at this particular layout, you see the tennis courts on the far uh, east portion, those four, you see those trees that are perimeter of those things. Those are all new trees yeah. that are being planted uh, to provide shade to the tennis court, and as, as well as just for aesthetically, just continue to maintain the tree canopy and uh, you know, just for nature, make sure we have, uh, our wildlife have places to go. So yes, uh, that has been considered over the past few years to make sure we maintain uh, as much of the mature trees within that facility as possible. Thank you. That concludes my report. Okay, next on the agenda is 6B, Recreation and Community Services Section Monthly Activity Report for September 2022. Good afternoon, President Sardar Rabigan, members of the Commission, City staff. My name is Sabah Garabedian, Community Services Manager, and I'll be going over the Recreation Section's monthly activity report for the month of September. On September 17, uh, Duke Majin Wilderness Park and Stone Bar Nature Center hosted the Gondal Parks and Open Space Foundation's uh, Stars in the Park event. Department staff uh, assisted the Gondal Parks and Open Space Foundation with making this event possible. It was our first major event since the opening of the Stone Bar Nature Center. The uh, evening attracted over 150 people. We used the south area, of, so, uh, the area south of the barn for outdoor seating and a banquet and honored some honore uh, honorees. You can see the sunset um, and you can see where the lectern was. Right behind the lectern is where everybody was able to uh, capture that sunset as the evenings uh, uh, evening progressed. Um, during the month of September, um, we activated cooling center for a total of uh, 21 days. Um, cooling centers are activated at all four community centers uh, pending availability and reservations when the county puts out a heat advisory, excessive heat warning, and temperatures are over 95 degrees or more over an extended period of time. 
what we do is we make uh, our community centers available to the members of the community so that they could come and use our facilities uh, as opposed to turning on their AC units at home. In some situations, people don't have the ability to afford uh, um, paying for that additional cost of energy for turning on their AC units. So, uh, some people don't have it, some people don't have central air and they have two bedrooms or two rooms that they live in. So the cooling centers are a good way for them to beat the heat and rely on city resources. And it helps us with uh, keeping our power demands a little bit more consistent as we're trying to put out uh, flex alerts and have people be mindful of using electricity uh, during peak time. So the department created a uh, gundlca.gov forward slash beat the heat where we're putting up our cooling center information whenever we are active. It includes the community centers, it includes uh, whatever is offering at Pacific Community Pool, our splash pads and tips to help beat the heat. So all that information is found on that webpage. Here's some graphics that we're post, uh, we post on social media as well as press releases. Next, I wanna talk about mobile recreation. Um, we talked about September 17 and our staff supporting the GPOSF event. Uh, on September 24, uh, our staff, our Glendale Rocks Climbing Wall went to March, Montrose Search and Rescue's 75th anniversary event at Crescenta Valley County Park. On the same day at Brand uh, Park, uh, right in front of the doctor's house, our LED screen was used to uh, show a movie, getting to know the doctor's house. On September 25, our staff went to uh, the Elks Lodge on Colorado Boulevard for Gunlow PD's Touch a Truck event. And then on September 30th, our staff uh, rolled out the LED screen again for Edison Elementary School's movie night. And the special events for mobile recreation just keep coming. Next one is scheduled for October 27 with the Glenlow Fire Department award ceremony followed by a movie night later on that evening. Our senior services program organized two activities for our seniors. The first was an AARP event that's found in your report. Um, AARP offers driver safety classes for seniors and who could get an additional discount of 10% off uh, depending on if they partner with AARP or not. Um, it's been a very popular uh, class in the past. It's a two day class. Sadly, only three people showed up this time. However, what you see in the picture here is 21 people taking advantage one by one, of course, of a hearing test provided by Connect Hearing. Um, Connect Hearing did a hearing test and if people needed any additional information or follow up for hearing aids, they were able to provide those services for them. Next, our elderly, elderly nutrition program, our EMP program, staff served 4,538 meals uh, in the hybrid congregate meals model during the month of September and 1,666 16, meals um, in the home delivered meals model. Our trails and open space programs had two volunteer work days in September uh, and staff coordinated one interpretive uh, program Friday night lecture. On September 9, staff held a Friday night lecture wildlife photography with 14 participants. On September 10, staff held a Riverwalk Workday uh, at Glendale Narrows Riverwalk with nine volunteers. And on September 17, 18 volunteers joined staff for a Wilderness Workday at Duke Majin Wilderness Park. At Duke Majin Wilderness Park, the Stone Barn Nature Center has had a total of 6,193 visitors since it opened, 542 of which were during the month of September. And then on September 10, we had our first uh, uh, open to the public GO program with 27 participants. The GO program is a program uh, designed to take people from South Glendale who otherwise don't have access to nature and nature education uh, over to Duke Majin Wilderness Park and get them out to Glendale's uh, outdoors. So this, this event was typically provided for our one Glendale students, uh, participants, and this is the first time on September 10 that we made it open uh, to the public, and we had 27 people come out. The next one will be taking place on November 12th. Our Youth and Family Services uh, program continued having its uh, teen night outs uh, weekly. On Friday, September 9, uh, TNO presented Glendale Co uh, Community College's Resource Night, um, where they shared re uh, resources uh, with the teens on what to expect when you graduate high school and the registration uh, process that follows after gradu graduating from high school. During the month of September, uh, STAR program continued having its weekly meetings. Um, Officer Barillet uh, from Gunda Police Department discussed the importance of active listening uh, with the students and they did their uh, seasonal crafts and activities throughout. 
Our Wong Lundal After School Youth Sports Program uh, started the week of September 13. It was scheduled to start a week prior, but given the heat wave, we thought it would be best for the kids to wait, a, uh, wait another week before their game started. So the Wong Lundal program takes place at eight South Glendale schools, um, and up to 30 kids from each school could participate in the program. Games take place on typically on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, depending on the season schedule, though we will double up and add Mondays and Thursdays as well. Games here, as you can see in the pictures, take place at Pacific Community Center, either on the artificial turf multi-use field or on the natural grass baseball field. Our staff will paint the lines for flag football um, on the grass. Um, we have lines already painted for uh, flag football on the artificial turf. Um, at least two games will happen every single day we have game days, and then through the end of the season, the top four teams play their playoffs, while the remaining uh, 16, uh, remaining four teams, in, in the case of flag football, will play their fifth, uh, fifth and sixth or seventh and eighth grade, uh, eighth place games. Uh, championship games coming up, and we'll talk about that here in, in a moment. One Glendale also went on a Glendale College uh, football night uh, in coordination with Glendale Community College. Um, Glendale Community College accommodated all of our one Glendale kids during one of their uh, Saturday night games. Um, and basically all the kids were able to watch a college football game. And it's, it's just a great way for us to partner with Glendale College, knowing that a lot of these kids will probably end up at the footsteps of Glendale College in one way, shape or form, whether it's for school, for athletics or anything else in between at some point in their future. Therapeutic recreation, um, our Club Maple program had its arts and crafts night. And on September 22nd, um, the Maple Park Community Center and the Shane's Inspiration Playground we have at that facility hosted uh, College View School. Uh, Shane's Inspiration and Inclusion Matters, a program of Shane's Inspiration coordinated with GUSD's College View School. And about 60 kids came out to the playground to uh, enjoy the uh, all-inclusive playground we have at that facility. Upcoming programs and events. Uh, like I said, we have our One Glendale uh, Championship Night that's gonna take place this Friday night at Pacific Community Center on the multi-use uh, field. Commissioners, if you have an RSVP and you are available, please let us know, uh, please let, uh, contact staff. We are looking for people, members of the commission, to be present to hand out the awards to these kids, whether it's a fourth place ribbon, third place, second place medals, and the first place medal and trophy. Uh, the event starts at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll have Gundal College there, Gundal Unified School District, police, fire, um, and various other city departments also in attendance. The LED screen will be there and we'll be using that as our giant scoreboard. Um, one day we'll be able to use it as a jumbotron and replay. Um, GUSD will be there along with USC as well. So it's a, it's a fun evening and it really stays true to its name uh, in, in one Glendale. Next, um, same night, a different facility. We have Parents Night Out at Spar Heights Community Center. This is an evening where um, for a $15 fee per child, our staff, our day camp staff will take care of the kids and parents are allowed to do whatever they want while we take care of the kids until midnight. Um, with Spar Heights Community Center, we work with Montreal Shopping Park Association and provide a $10 script, which uh, most businesses will on, uh, honor and they'll get $10 off whatever shopping or dining that they do at Montreal Shopping Park. On Saturday, October 22nd, uh, we have our annual fall festival at Pacific Community Center featuring our pumpkin patch, the Gundal Rocks climbing wall, arts and crafts, various community booths, including uh, recently confirmed LA Galaxy will be there. Um, as well as various businesses. Um, the event's from 11 to two, it's free and open to the public. There's zero cost for any, anything that you're having at that uh, facility with the exception of the acai truck that we're trying to finalize. That would be purchase what you are asking for. Everything else will be at no charge. Same night, October 22nd, we have a sunset hike and interpretive program at Duke Major, uh, Duke Major Wilderness Park. Uh, as of today, Glen Oaks Park uh, was shut down uh, due to construction uh, through regional parks and uh, open space grant and measure A. And Pelanconi Park is also closed uh, at this time uh, for that uh, construction via the same grant. And that will be opening up um, as soon as the project is completed. We're hoping in the next two to three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. 
On October 25, uh, we have a tenants' rights uh, workshop, a virtual presentation in coordination with Armenian Bar Association. Uh, this is a virtual presentation um, that our staff at the Adult Recreation Center will be uh, mon uh, monitoring. On October 28, we have Parents' Night Out. This time it's at Pacific Community Center. Um, again, same program, almost the same staff, 6 p.m. to midnight. And then on October 29, in collaboration with Shane's Inspiration and Inclusion Matters, we have a big Halloween event at Maple Park. Um, instead of MIP Day, we pushed it back and timed our MIP Day with um, Shane's Inspiration's Tricks and Treats program. This is uh, an inclusion uh, related uh, Halloween event at, that will be taking place at Maple Park. Moving on, we have a driver safety workshop uh, for teens taking place on Friday, November 4. Uh, we have a fair housing workshop uh, and for Glenda landlords taking place um, in the next coming weeks uh, on Wednesday, November 2nd. We have our GO program, like I mentioned earlier, on November 12th. Another one followed uh, on December 10, and then another parents' night out um, that's taking place on Friday, November 18 at Pacific Community Center, and that takes us out until the next commission meeting. That concludes my presentation, if anybody has any questions. Just a comment, wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing anything, are you? No. <laughs> Just relaxing. No, no it's, it's great. I'm seeing all these things that we're doing to help the community, and that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, the uh, the event you guys had with Glendale College, I think the more and more we do stuff like that, um, A, obviously it's a gateway for kids to eventually go to college, but more than that, I think that, um, oh my God, Glendale College and the new superintendent, Dr. Ryan, um, is very open to the idea of you know getting the community involved with uh, the, the college itself. So I think the more and more we do that with the various sports they have or any other activities, I think it's just an extra uh, feature for you know the, st the kids of our community. So thank you. No problem. Thank you, President Sardarigan. And just so you know, we are going to be hitting them up again for volleyball night uh, mm -hmm. for one Glendale's volleyball season. And then depending on the situation, basketball as well. We kind of like going to pro teams for the soccer season, but it's really hard coordinating an LAFC or a Galaxy game. But uh, absolutely, Gundo College has been a really big supporter of our program recently. So we want to continue. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and last on our agenda is 6C Park Services Section Monthly Activity Report for August 2022. Thank you, Iris. Uh, President Starbegian, members of commission, good afternoon again. Uh, for the month of August, the Park Services section completed 805 work orders uh, for your general non-routine uh, repairs and for preventive maintenance. Uh, groundskeepers completed 782 work orders, pest application, three work orders, and then irrigation crew completed 20 work orders for total labor hours of approximately 1,400 uh, labor hours. Um, that is the extent of the presentation. Uh, we do have the detailed list of all those work orders attached. If you have any questions about any of them, I'd be uh, happy to <laughs> attempt to answer them for you. I have a question about Fremont Park restrooms. Yes. Uh, there are no soap dispensers whatsoever in the building, and since construction will not start until next June, uh, as is projected now, can we do something about that? Yes, uh, Commissioner Meek, since the last time we spoke, we actually have a new uh, a one ordered because the one there is malfunction, is not really working. So we will replace them until the construction happens. Construction is probably about six to nine months out. Yeah. We're not gonna leave it without soap. So we have plans, we've already put in a work order to have a new one installed so we can have uh, a dispenser that's actually working, functioning until the restrooms are replaced. That's both in men's and women's. Both, yeah, in every restroom we have. We have two uh, freestanding restrooms there one by the waiting pool and one by the tenants concession there. I think only one of the restrooms, both of them are, are not functioning, so we'll, we'll replace them. Okay, I know the one by the tennis courts, uh, women's and men's does not have working soap That's dispensers. That's correct. Okay. I believe that's it. Yeah. Okay, that's all we had on the agenda. Time to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.
So the meeting is uh, adjourned. November twenty-first, I believe. Let me check. Is that the third? Yes, November twenty-first. Is the next meeting. Okay. Thank you, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.